What's up guys? Today we are continuing our journey through the Clone Wars chronological rewatch with the episode The Citadel. This is the start of a new arc. And uh, before we dive in, let's just get the message out of the way. This one is adaptation is the key to survival. Uh, but yeah, this is another good arc. The end of season three is pretty dang solid. Yeah, I really like the Citadel stuff. Yeah, it's very cool. Very, uh, I don't know, it's got like James Bond, Indiana Jones <laughs> kind of things, which obviously I always enjoy. But James Bond, I can see that with like the main bad guy being like super over the top and <laughs> uh-huh and like filling this place with traps and stuff yeah uh so the setup for this is that even peel has been kidnapped which this arc ultimately does uh communicate why he is not in any of the movies uh after i don't recall him being in attack of the clones but he mm -hmm. might have been but he's definitely not in revenge of the sith <laughs> uh so Anakin and Obi-Wan and the clones are going to go break him out of the Citadel, which is a really cool spot. Yeah, it was created specifically to contain Jedi. Yeah, I want to know how it fell into Separatist hands. I mean, I guess Dooku had some knowledge of it uh, and they just hopefully it wasn't being used and being like it, it wasn't full of Jedi or anything. <laughs> Uh, so it probably wasn't very well protected. Yeah. Uh, they mention it in Dooku Jedi Lost uh, as a place that sifo might get sent to because they were treating it more as like a rehabilitation place, but it sounds pretty sinister. Like yeah. Yeah. they were just sending Jedi who had visions there. And it's like, that doesn't feel great. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like one of those creepy camps that shouldn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, that's kind of how they present it. Uh, so Anakin has this idea, and this is like the first adapt adaptation they have to make. is like, well, we can't get in because we have life signals, and they're only letting droids in. So they freeze themselves in carbonite. We got to address this elephant in the room because people ask about it all the time. Like, why did Darth Vader... Uh, like have to test the carbon freeze chamber on Han if he knew that it was possible to survive from this episode. And in the, in the movie, he says this facility is crude and he's more concerned about the equipment mm -hmm. being used that that might kill Luke. Not so much the act of carbon freezing. Yeah. Obviously that's a retcon, but yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they do that. When they get there, they realize Ahsoka has tagged along because Anakin forbade her from coming. And she she gets to talk to Plo Koon a little bit and decides that, no, she's going to come. They don't really show us that conversation, but I do wonder if Plo Koon actually gave her like his blessing to be like, yeah, go sneak in on this mission. <laughs> because I think she does make a valid point. I mean, it's not completely reckless that she joins this mission. Uh, she is arguing that it's not Anakin's place to decide when and where she uh, gets to put her life in danger. Yeah, this is just yet another example of how Anakin is very possessive and controlling. Yeah, and I mean, like, it's one of those kind of you walk the line and I see his side of the argument. It is a very dangerous mission, and uh, but she puts her life on the line plenty of other times. And it's like, why is he choosing this one specifically to leave her out? Mm -hmm. uh, and it turns out that she needed to come along because the the door was ray shielded and she was the only one that could fit through like this vent to let them in, which again, adaptation. That's basically what this episode is, is they just keep running into obstacle after obstacle and they're like, well, how do we solve this one? Right. And we get to see Tarkin. Yeah that by the end of the episode, they rescue both Peel and his uh, captain, who is revealed to be Tarkin. I love the... It was very small, but I love that, like, the repertoire between Anakin and Tarkin was a little bit tense, and they kind of were snippy at each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's fun to see that relationship develop, especially in the next episode. Um, and... I, We'll get into that a little bit now, I think, because Tarkin argues that the Jedi don't go far enough to achieve victory, and Anakin even goes as far to agree with that. And 
I that kind of lines up with the whole idea of adaptation mm-hmm. and the Jedi don't adapt and it does lead to their downfall but at the same time it's like should they be adapting to that yeah uh to to Tarkin's ideals yeah and I would argue no uh but then if we look at someone like Ahsoka at the end of the Clone Wars or Cal Kestis I think that they both do adapt to survive but they like adaptation doesn't have to mean what Tarkin and Anakin are kind of insinuating. Mm-hmm. Adaptation doesn't have to mean like going full dark side and completely abandoning uh, what was good about the past. Right. I, I would say that Anakin, or not Anakin, Ahsoka choosing to not kill any clones when we got the Siege of Mandalore and Order 66 arc, that's kind of adapting. That's something she did to adapt to a situation that, some of the other Jedi didn't do. <laughs> I agree, yeah. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the Citadel, unless you have anything else to add. I don't think so. Yeah, and we will talk about uh, the next episode next time. It's called Counterattack, continuing. That's a Season 3, Episode 19, if you want to lo- watch along. But if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.